Hey guys, Tyler 2K here. Today we're going to do some speculation on the Red Bull Golden Letters Tournament that's going to be taking place uh, this upcoming weekend. Uh, I originally wasn't going to do a speculation video about it, uh, but I got a request for it, so it's like, okay, give the people what they want. Uh, so here we are. So uh, first things first, these are my opinions. Uh, we're going to do some, uh, my own kind of breakdowning of like players and matchups and stuff like that. Uh, but of course, it's purely speculatory. I was way off with EWC. Um, although I had, I had hope. I had hope that Olsen was going to take it. Uh, so yeah, we're, we'll see. This is going to be like the, the big rematch that everyone's looking for, right? But we have a lot of high level players here. Uh, this tournament is a little bit different from last year. So first thing, the difference between the two of them is there's no more LCQ and it's going to be split over two days. Um, also, the, in case you don't aren't aware, the golden letters part of the, the, the name refers to uh, a perfect or a great. So these are first of three matches. And if at any time versus your opponent, you get any combination of three perfects or greats against them, you instantly win. So you could be you could be losing completely and, and sneak out like three greats at the end and you just instantly win the match. So that's kind of cool. It, it hasn't really happened yet. Um, I, okay, come thinking, it might have happened once or was ready to happen once, but at that, at that point, the person had already lost. But hopefully this year we get to see it. And also, I, I like the representation here. Uh, so in case you haven't heard, as you can see on the screen, a TIFF, um, for whatever reason, I, I don't know 100%, he's unable to make it. Um, so he was replaced. I, I don't know why who, unfortunately, but yeah, a Tiff can't make it. Uh, a Tiff would have like definitely spiced things up too. But uh, yeah, so the, uh, there's two things. So day one will be group stage. So pool one versus themselves, pool two, blah, blah, blah. What's interesting is the top two make it out, but the the third place person is put into the loser side of the bracket. And then for the the final day, and then the, fin the last two people of that group don't make it out. So we're gonna have two winners, uh, and then one loser, and then the, unfortunately the rest of them get eliminated. And then day two, it will be a, a double elimination tournament. Uh, so they're not going to like redo the pool. So we'll try to figure it out. We'll do some speculatory. We'll, we'll presume like pool one versus pool three uh, sort of stuff. And, like that's typically how they do it. But I don't know the real thing. I, I took a look at uh, Liquid. Uh, for their information because usually they're pretty good with having all the rule sets uh, well defined but yeah this year uh, no dice I'm not really finding anything about it so let's go ahead uh, let's start with group one pool one uh, which looks absolutely uh, absurdly strong already so big shout out there let's go ahead and load up my fancy uh, paint okay so uh, yeah this is this is crazy so uh, Arslan Ash, obviously everyone's favorite Pakistani player, arguably the best in the world, if not the best top two, maybe top three, you know, but yeah, consistently the, the best, like the, the, the pure incredible player that Arslan is, and also the fact he plays quite a few characters. Almost certainly we are going to see Nina from him, um, and then that will be... I don't think he would play an old, although he can play quite a few characters. Uh, speaking of which, AK... Um, can also play quite a few characters, but we're probably going to see Shaheen. So I'll do a quick one here uh, from the Philippines. We have uh, Kanan Trench, uh, who had put Yoshi on the map in uh, Tekken 7. Um, now that Te you know Yoshi's even better, Kanan Trench is by default like a stronger player. So he was already strong as it was, uh, but now we like, take him to the nth degree. Really, really good. Uh, Yu Yu has definitely gotten better over the years. Uh, she is a Japanese um, a Xiaoyu player. Uh, yeah, like the last time I saw her play, uh, she had gotten significantly better, uh, which is impressive because she was pretty good uh, from the get-go. You know, she never had like that big breakout international, but um, yeah, very consistent and uh, a good uh, Xiaoyu play. And like I said, she's gotten better and kind of similar to Kane. Now that um, Xiaoyu also has a few more tricks and is a little bit scarier to fight against, it really fits her play style very, very well. Speaking of which, Sour Piggy, who I'm sure would rather have Julia in this game, but he's well known for his uh, Kuma play. Kuma, same thing. They're, these characters like you know Kuma, Xiaoyu, and Yoshi were reverse order of tier list there. But like they're all characters who really play Tekken Seven, you know, fairly well, and are also scary. And, and characters who basically are with one like two touch situations. You you guess wrong once, well you better hope you don't guess wrong the second time because you're going to be you know D D right. So really big. Okay. So that should cover that. Let's go ahead and talk about head-to-head -head matchups. So 
Uh, I'm sure everyone's thinking, and, and of course, this is like right here. Obviously, it's not quite alphabetical um, because it would be reversed. But Arslan versus AK, I believe that was Combo Breaker, uh, which was a few months ago. And AK did the, the awesome upset of beating Arslan in the match. Um, as usual, it was fairly close. Um, I also did like a little bit of a, a review of some of the people I'm not familiar with. So I, I took a look at some head-to-head -head matchups. So I did actually do some homework uh, before talking to you guys. Usually I do this off the dome. Uh, but yeah, today I'm like, you know what? Let's get a little bit more uh, knowledgeable here. But yeah, yeah, AK versus Arslan. Match came down to the wire. Uh, I believe it came down to the final game. Uh, I, I can't remember if this was the final round, though, but yeah, it definitely came down to a game five, and AK was able to persevere and, and pull through against Arslan. Arslan um, is always going to be a threat, um, so it, this matchup is probably really coin flippish. Now, in the past, when it came to like their T7 results, Arslan definitely had AK's number, um, but yeah, nowadays, AK is finding his own when it comes to the Shaheen. Uh, of course, the Shaheen like sneak two nerf was a detriment, but overall he's been finding his own. So, but despite that, despite the the head-to-head -head win, you know, AK versus Arslan, I still have to give Arslan a little slight edge. So, in the AK, and actually, I didn't really think about how I was going to do this. So, in the head-to-head, -head, yeah, I, I do think Arslan's going to have a slight edge, probably about 55, uh, 45 that Ar uh, Arslan will probably pull through it. So, uh, actually, how should I split this up? Because I'm realizing this is group play, so we can't do, like, the double elimination again. Okay, so let's... Uh, you know what we can do? We'll go ahead and, and like, do the, the temporary hold for you guys, and I'll just kind of move it to the side. But let's go ahead and give them points here. So let's give uh, a point to Arslan, and we'll give... Uh, zero because a head-to-head, right? You only get one point. Okay, so let's do uh, AK versus Kane and Trench. Uh, this is actually kind of in a similar boat to what we had just seen, too. Um, I, I think overall, Kane and Trench, you know, playing the Yoshi, uh, I, I do believe AK has a good amount of Yoshi practice, and I think... Uh, now, I don't know if they played each other head-to-head. -head. I'm kind of going through the old Noggin database here trying to think of where they actually played head-to-head. -head. But I, I, I think AK has done work against Yoshi in the past. I mean, I in at least in Tekken 7, I really kind of like the Shaheen versus Yoshi matchup. It kind of feels in the same boat. Uh, I mean, Shaheen to forward 4 is probably really good against spin. Down forward 3 probably has range. Like, uh, one of the issues with, like, in the head-to-head -head matchup between, like, uh, Yoshi and quite a few characters is sometimes their homing moves just simply don't have the range uh, to really uh, to lock you down. So uh, a character like Shaheen, I think, wouldn't have that problem. I think forward four and down four three probably would fill that gap fairly well. So don't, I wouldn't say let's completely disregard Kane and Trench, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I want, I, I want to give AK the slight edge. But yeah, it's Yoshi is so chaotic, and when Kane is on, Kane is on. So I was gonna originally give him like 65 AK, but it's probably gonna be closer to like 60 40. I think that's about it. Yeah, uh, I think I kind of said the same thing with EWC. It really depends on what Kane we're gonna get. AK is super consistent. Even on a bad day, he's still fairly consistent. But I think, 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 I think the consistency of AK, despite like Kane will probably persevere. Uh, so let's go ahead and give him like a 1-0 here. And we'll just keep going down the line. Okay, Kane and Trent versus Yu Yu. Um, I, I think this would come down to just pure matchup knowledge. I, I think I think it's easier... Um, you know, it, let's... Well, we can talk tier list, but like... I, I think it's more likely that Kane has encountered a, a very strong Xiao Yu. Like, for instance, like back in the day... Uh, what was it? Was a Chicken Maru playing? Like, um, God, I feel I feel bad. Like T seven in my mind is like so far away now. But I, I think it's more likely that Kane has encountered very top tier Xiaoyu's than Yu Yu has encountered like super top tier Yoshi Mitsu's. Head to head matchup. I'm just thinking of the characters overall. Yeah, it's gonna be a clown fiesta. Like I I don't know what Yoshi would have to beat AOP, but now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if CD2 would beat AOP cleanly in this game. Granted, CD2 is not safe. 
Down back three would beat two. Oh, actually, you know, come to think of it, shit, down two probably hits AOP. And having that tool alone is probably worth its weight in gold. Yeah, down two is a very, very strong tool for sure. Yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, I, 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 I wish I would know. Like, I've seen, like I said, I've seen UU play recently, and she does fairly well. But I, I don't know. I'm not, I can't think of what experience when it comes to Yoshi she would have. And Kane is like the premier Yoshi. And even if you have a good read on him, on like Yoshi overall, I think Kane would still probably pull through. I'm going to give slightly better odds. Um, I'll give it like, you know, 66 to 33. Uh, Kane and Trench favor to Yu Yu. Okay. Yeah, here, here, here's another one. Like, how much experience, in, you know, in the same way, how much experience does Sour Piggy have with, like, strong Shao Yu play? Yeah, I, I don't... Man, I would have to think about it. Like, like you know, for for instance, over here in America, appealing probably, I think, would probably come to mind. It's, like, the best Shao Yu. I'm sure I'm making a lot of American players mad by saying that, but I can't immediately think of anyone else. Like, Dastry comes to mind. But I, I don't know if Dastry is quite up to Peeling's level. Now, does does Sour Piggy play against like Peeling quite often? And then let's see, in a bear matchup, what does Bear have to beat AOP? Back one, I would say. Up forward two, but up forward two is so slow. Swipe ideas would lose. Twin Piston would probably miss too. Down forward one has some like back in like Tekken 7, down forward one was actually decently good, like left hitting move. And yeah, not anymore. It's, it kind of sucks against sidestep right. And that's the way AOP is going to naturally drop. So down back three, down back four. Down back two might not even hit. I'm just thinking out loud here. So back one presence, back one 13, forward almost two shoulder. Yeah, it, it's going to be close. I, I, honestly, at this point, it, it's just going to be whoever has the most matchup experience. We have two tricky characters. And who is going to exploit their trickiness the, the better? So I, I can't I can't say it. So I would call this a 50-50. And then usually the shorthand it, which I, I always forget until the end, I usually do the, the coin. So it's a it's a 50-50 shot between the two of them. Uh, I'll go ahead, I'll just say uh, 0.5 in between. Okay, so now we have uh, Arslan versus Kane and Trench. I believe they did play each other. Ooh, did they play each other? Kane and Trench had lost in pool. Arslan, I think, was in Group B, and Kane was in Group D. They wouldn't have played each other at EWC, unless they did. Yeah, I like Kane and Trench making out of EWC, but he didn't. Ooh, man, I, I, I think, I, I think this matchup. I, okay, I'm pretty sure the last time I talked about this matchup. I gave it pretty even odds. To be fully honest, I still kind of like even odds. I, I think I think Arslan does have uh, the edge here. I, I think Arslan probably has. It, it's probably closer to 60-40, but I, I think Arslan will will like be able to hold on through. Um, same thing like last time. Same thing I talked about earlier. You know which sour piggy are we gonna get? I really hope sour piggy shows up and fucking annihilates. Uh, sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm. I, I do. I do mean that. <laughs> but okay, Kane Trench. I, I want to be proven right. What they want? I want it. I want it. But yeah, I think this is probably 55, uh, 45. But like I said, I still, I still want Sour Piggy to, to pull through. But it's probably 55, 45. It probably is a little bit more like you know, like 60, 40. But I think Arslan will realistically pull through here. Uh, and how should I break this up? Okay, that would be second position. Sorry, I had a, an idea like doing this, but now on, on hindsight, I guess I, I could throw it into this spot because he's the first spot. Okay, um, yeah, I think Arslan's gonna pull through. And you know what we'll do is break, now that we have it set, we'll, we'll, we'll pull it through the whole distance. So we'll just do Arslan and then we'll go down from where we're missing people at. Okay, Arslan versus Yuyu. I think they have played kind of similar to, you know, Yu Yu versus Kane and Trench. Has Yu Yu played a, a Nina of, of Arslan's caliber? Well, 
First, of course, I mean, saying it out loud, that sounds ridiculous because, like, he's arguably the best in the world. But I, I think I think it's more likely that you're encountering a very strong Nina player than you are to have played against, like, a really, really strong Yoshimitsu. Um, they're both really good, but I, I think Yoshi really tends itself to be more of a character specialist character, whereas uh, a character like Nina... It, you know, has some speciality with like like resets and traps like that. But I think that really comes down to just general, uh, what's where I'm looking for, like um, mechanical play skill and knowledge and stuff like that. So I, I think it's more likely that she's played a Nina who's very strong than a Yoshi who's incredibly strong, especially in Japan. But yeah, I, I, I think, man, I, I, do, I do wish now I did watch some more Yu Yu matches, but yeah, I think think it's it's probably pretty close i think realistically 66 like 33 i think that's probably right on target you also got to keep in mind that these are first the threes so like if, if you still comes out swinging um she still has to beat arslan another two matches um i i i know i did say something kind of similar in the uh, ewc but um yeah i mean like I said, it's going to be so... Man, would she Arslan, dude? Yeah, I, I, I can't see it, unfortunately. I, th I, I think, I think yeah, I think Arslan clears. Okay, so now we have Sour Piggy uh, versus Arslan. So, the one thing I, I can say is that we here in America, we do have some pretty good, like, tournament tier... Uh, Nina players, the the what I would normally do would be like I would say oh you know Sour Piggy has a nice he has a little bit of an edge here despite the fact like Arslan's the best in the world because he plays a character like Kuma. The only issue is I know um, uh, the Wood has a, a a bear and I I remember watching footage from a few weeks ago of him training versus the Wood. And doing fairly well. There were a couple of sequences where the wood was able to to pull through and make Arslan look kind of foolish, but yeah, I I think he has the the pedigree to really take it to bear. Also, the fact that I think for the most part, the Nina versus uh, Bear matchup is probably pretty good in Nina's favor. Um, that one of the really like trademark problems of a Bear here is like their ten frame Punisher two one is only plus two. So even when you take your 10 frame punishment, which, you know, Nina has quite a few uh, safer moves that are not safe, but still are punishable. It's like, what does Bear do? 2-1 and then try to come in and get eaten by sidestep 2, WTF, down 3. I mean, there's so many options that Nina can go for. So I, I think there is a little bit more of a favor for Sour Picky to, to pull through just because of, I, I, I know, the Nina like skill level here. But still, I, 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 I don't like this matchup specifically. It's probably 60-40 um, in Sour P uh, Arslan's favor, uh, unfortunately. Okay, so we have AK uh, versus Yu Okay, I think it's more likely that Yu Yu has seen uh, Shaheen play. I, I think when it comes to like Japanese Shaheen play, there's quite a lot of it. Uh, that it, it, it's it, it's one of those characters who would have seen you would have seen like the really early burst and then post like a, a sneak to nerf he slowly would have like faltered from becoming like super super popular but yeah I, I think I think you's more likely to have seen and or played against high level uh, Shaheen with that being said AK I'm I'm pretty sure is really good against <laughs> Xiaoyu and then same thing, I, I think for the, the most part, the matchup is pretty good in Shaheen's favor. Uh, the nicer little hitbox, I mean, an option like down three would probably completely uh, annihilate, um, what do you call it, uh, would, uh, would annihilate uh, AOP dropping. Also the fact that there are a few crucial minus 14s for Xiaoyu and uh, having down back 2-1, having back 4-2, which even hits on 13 in this game, is nice a uh, punishment tool. So not only do you have the hop kick, the orbital, you have nice little low hitting options to beat and not AOP, but then if she tries to overcommit, you do have consistent punishers against her, uh, which is pretty, pretty nice. So realistically, it, it, I think it's gonna be closer 
than because of probably the matchup experience. But I, I still think AK has the favor. 60, 40, maybe, maybe like 65. Maybe it's hard to say, but I, I think AK uh, will persevere here. Let's go and throw it there. Okay. AK versus uh, Sour Piggy. Whoops. Now, the, the first thing that comes to mind is in this matchup, the, the Bear versus Shaheen matchup, I, I'm, inclined, I'm kind of inclined to believe this is actually not a bad matchup for Bear. The the really short legs... Now, gr now granted, nowadays, like maybe like the Sneak 3 cross-up structures are probably pretty good for, uh, for uh, Shaheen. But if, yeah, back in the day... I don't think you could go for the longer, like, sneak for two combos. I think you'd have to specifically do different combos or worse or com like, like worse combos in general. And then on top of that, uh, an option like uh, down back two, let's say, with bear, uh, which is minus 15 in this game, can't be, like, wall stand two punished. Then also the natural, like, backdashing movement and just the fact that Typically, a character like Shaheen wants to play more linear play style. Really plays into uh, the strength of Bear. So, I think realistically, I mean, re let's be honest. Like realistically, AK probably does have the pedigree and like you know experience to play uh, against Bear. But I, I, I really, really, really want to give a shout out to Piggy because if he's prepared, like he has the good experience and he, you know, he has the the fundamentals, which he definitely has. This is going to be very, very close. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it if this goes possibly, you know, 3-2, at the bare minimum, 3-1. Um, I don't think this is going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be very close. With that being said, I think AK still has the favor. Probably, like, 55, 45 uh, to, like, 60, realistically. AK definitely probably has the favor, but I, I don't think it's as um, obvious as one might initially kind of think. Okay, so that just leaves us with uh, Kane and Trench uh, versus Sour Piggy. Ooh, okay. So, I, I mean, I really like y Yoshimitsu. So, like, in a head-to-head -head matchup right away, I, I think, like, Yoshimitsu just naturally stronger. Now, unlike the other players, um, which we'll, we're going to talk about later, too, uh, we do, on the table, have Nino from Germany. So, he's in group... C or B? I, th I think he's in C. So Nino is like a high-level tournament player. He was on a tear for quite a some time. So you know like damn well Kane and, and like Nino play often. And I believe if I remember correctly, Sour Piggy does kind of play like Nino. They're, or they're similar enough that it's not like like whoa, like will a really big difference of course, right? So I, I think in a head-to-head -head matchup it's probably like close to 60 40 period but with the fact that like kane probably has played against nino quite often and it's going to have the muscle memory and, and actual like immediate knowledge like doesn't have to be like oh yeah that's blah 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 or that's unsafe or i can do this or that i think it's going to be more natural for kane and trench so unfortunately yeah this is probably going to be a, a blowout uh 3-0 maybe 3-1 but i i think it's probably like 66 uh, 33, like maybe to be honest, maybe even 70. I, I I want Sour Piggy to do really well. Unfortunately, this bracket, yeah, it's it's that's a tough one. It, definitely a tough one. So uh, we'll go ahead, we'll cut them out, and we'll throw them on the original one. We'll s okay, one, two, three. I, I think that I think that's pretty much ordered. So uh, winner side. And then uh, loser side. Okie dokie. Uh, Gosane. Um, obviously, so what's what's kind of interesting about Gosane, uh, super, super well known, like previous to Tekken 8, for his uh, law play. So obviously, he's from Great Britain. Um, but he was making his name at the beginning there with a character like Victor. So I, I think nowadays, Gosane tends to play law I, I think he we have seen him still bust out victor but i think for the most part it's probably like 70 percent law maybe 80 percent law but it, it's nice to have victor on the 
kind of like in the back there, just in like, you know, you kind of need to bust him out sometimes. Okay, he has that ability to, to pick a character. With that being said, I think Law is significantly better than Victor. So I hope Gosain just plays uh, Law throughout. JSR, no um, introduction necessary. Former EVO winner, um, Dragonov player. He's been playing Dragonov forever. Um, from this group, he probably has the best chance of making out. Uh, with that being said, he has been in something of a rut lately. But, um, yeah, this might be his time to shine and, and pull through. And playing character like Dragonov definitely doesn't hurt. Uh, obviously from South Korea. Uh, Speed Kicks is here uh, in America uh, from the East Coast. So I'm on West Coast. Um, realistically, we're probably going to see Harong. Um, he also has a Nino character, uh, you know, uh, character at his disposal. I would imagine this might be kind of similar to Gosain. It might be more heads up. Uh, counter pick potential to pick a character like Nina. Um, so I think that's realistically what's going to happen. It's probably going to be like 60 40 of like Nina play to, uh, sorry, uh, of Harong play to Nina. With that being said, Speed Kicks also tends to be a, a type of player who will pick one character and stick with it. I, I think once he gets that mindset, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to play blah, blah, blah this entire tournament and just kind of go through it. So um, my guess is we're either going to get. Harong or Nina, I don't know which one, but the first match will determine who we're going to see. With that being said, I, I think, think, think it's going to be uh, Harong the whole way through. Uh, Ao Richie from the Great Bin as well. Um, everyone's favorite uh, Leo player. L was that last year? Did he win that or was that the year before? I can't remember. I think maybe the last year was the, the first year. Uh, but yeah, last time we had seen it, um, he ended up winning the entire tournament. But Le Leo player... Uh, been sticking with Leo forever. Almost certainly going to keep playing Leo. I can't see him, you know, switching horses midstream. So that's what we're going to see. And as we talked about earlier, so this was Group B or Group Two. Uh, Nino from Germany, super super strong uh, bear player. As I mentioned, he was completely terrorizing the um, EU tournaments for a while there. And uh, yeah, don't sleep on him. Don't sleep on uh, Nino whatsoever. Okay, Go Saint versus JDCR. Uh, this, I think, is a slight edge to JDCR. I, I think they do have experience with each other, although off the top of my head, I can't think of what it is. But for some reason, it, it is coming to mind. Um, yeah. Uh, overall, I think the, the Dragunov versus Law matchup, you know, despite the fact that Dragunov is like top five and, you know, Law isn't, the like top 10, top 15 maybe. But yeah, I, I think in head to head, the matchup for Dragunov is really, really good. The only kind of issue is if, you know, Dragunov is put, constantly put on the back foot, then it's harder to come back and, you know, start uh, establishing uh, counter pressure and stuff like that, especially when uh, Dragunov's power crush is fairly poor. Reversals can't be beat nowadays, but um, I think the the main benefit is that it, this is the same thing. This is a first to three. If Gosain still comes out swinging, I think JDSR does have plenty of time to properly adjust and get uh, to understand Gosain better. With that being said, you know, well, okay, well, maybe Gosain will opt not to play Dragonov versus Law. Maybe he'll play Victor, which is, a, in my opinion, actually, yeah, a little bit better for Victor. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think realistic we're going to see Law. But probably, if I was to give odds, probably like 40, 60, going to maybe, you know, like 65 in favor of JDCR. Again, I think the first of three is really what's going to uh, really benefit JDSR in this head-to-head -head matchup. Go saying if it was a first of two, this would probably be a coin flip. I wouldn't doubt it whatsoever. Okay, so JDSR versus Speed Kicks. Ooh, man, I really feel like they did play each other. Was that at a TWT they played each other? Ooh, man, I am not sure. Damn. So, first thing that comes to mind is I, I can't remember, it, it, I think, man, the same thing, this is like TWT last year so or stuff, right? So when JD Star played against Rest, I think Rest had beat him, but the same thing, that was in a, that was in an older game, but I, I think, 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 man, okay, let me, let me, let me, same thing, let me, let me drop into the old mind here, try to figure stuff out. Okay, so, Really good movement character. Dragonov, he has super good movement. A character like Harong is, you know, has issues with um, 
just uh, you know, once he commits to a stance, he's forced into stance. Down four three is an improvement. You know, backlash on the table, but same thing offline. It's harder. This damn. I really, really, really wish I knew their their head to head because I feel like that there was a head to head here. Okay, I'm going to say this is probably this is probably pretty close. I I think what's going to happen. I think this is going to be a blow up. Someone's going to fucking annihilate the other person. I don't think we're going five. I don't think we're going four. I think this is going to be a three zero one direction or another. With the with direction that is, I I can't say. Honestly, can't say. I would say I want to give a slight edge to JDCR, but it's a coin flip nonetheless. So I'm going to go ahead and give um uh, a point five. I think that's realistic. Okay, speed kicks first. Ao Richie. Harong. Actually, you know he might play Nina in this matchup. Damn, this is one of those things. I, I really wish I knew if he can play Harong the whole way through, or Nina through. I, I think if he was to play Nina, I think this would probably be a better matchup for him. At the same time, does you know then then we get to the realm of okay, Ao Richie. How does he play against Jod? Right? How how well does he do against a a player like Jod's level sort of thing? So, hmm. Yeah, this this is another really close one. Damn. Yeah, I honestly I I, I don't know. I think. Damn, damn. Have they played head to head? It is kind of like in my mind, but I I can't think of one. I'm probably missing one. Yeah, I can't say. I, I can't say because I think there's too much at, 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 on the table here. If 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 Speed plays Harong, I think it's a slight edge to Richie. I think if Speed plays Nina, it's a slight f edge to Speed Kick. So, uh, you know, what? I'll just do the coin. I'm just gonna flip the coin here. Um, I'll say I'll give a slight edge to Speed Kicks. I mean, it is a Richie home field advantage, but I, I think realistically, it, it's gonna be close. And I'll give a 0.5 with the star to speed. And actually, come to think of it, we'll, we'll give the stars because yeah, this one might we might need a, a bracket um, tiebreaker. Okay, Richie versus Nino. I mean, in a head-to-head -head, like the actual like head-to-head -head matchup between a character like Bear and uh, Leo, I really am inclined to believe the matchup is significantly better for Leo. Long range, big hitbox, uh, strong pressure tools, good counter hit, good evasion, stuff like that. In a head to head, it probably is 60 40. Uh, Richie's favor. With that being said, I think when it comes to their actual performance versus one another, that Nino has the slight edge here. So I might be completely wrong off base, but I think Nino has done well against Richie. Yeah, this is, this is definitely another one of these coin flip brackets. With that being said, ooh man, I want I'm gonna give I'm gonna give an actual edge. 55, 45. I, I think Nino has a, a significant chance, or a realistic chance rather, not significant, a chance of actually beating Richie here. Um, with that being said, because the brackets are well known, I wouldn't doubt it if Richie has is going out for the next or the last week and just grinding against Bear. Okay. You you know how to play against you know, against uh, Dragonob like you already have the what do you call it the Harong experience so uh, Law you probably have Law experience for the most part same thing I'm sure they play against you against you quite often so what does that leave you as like the character you really have to grind against and that leaves just Bear versus like the other brackets or the previous bracket too where there's a, a diff, like a pretty wide diverse cast of what you're going against you know yoshi Xiaoyu, stuff like that this one is pretty set in stone and you being the person who you know is playing one of the lesser used characters gives you a slight edge with that being said you know at this point no one it's like people know leo people know bear but still you have to don't sleep on tricky characters overall because they, they can pull it through. But I think, think, think uh, Nino has the edge here. Okay, so let's go ahead. I don't remember what I did last time. Okay, let's just continue the bracket, I guess.
Okay, Gosain versus Dino. Ooh, man. Now, I have they played each other? Thinking about it, I don't have anything immediate. And actually, come to think of it, one, one second. Let me, let me quickly do this. Okay, Gosain versus Dino. Okay, first inclination is I, I, think, I think Law versus Bear is good. I think Victor versus Bear is good. Now, the only issue I have with like Victor versus Bear matchup is uh, Victor lost access to back 1 plus 2 on 15. Uh, doesn't have the range in Death War 2. Doesn't have nearly enough range to kind of reach character like Bear. So that's my first inclination. The good news, though, is that the new uh, EI4 structure should perfectly work against Bear, despite the fact that the legs are shorter, uh, because now modern day meta, Death War 4 2, strong aerial, uh, EI4 2, strong aerial, down back 2 2. Or, or sorry, Perfume 2-2 two, two line leaves you in, perf uh, in EI, and EI-2 has a billion range, so you don't have to worry about the legs dropping out. So I, I think regardless, uh, I don't know their head-to-head -head stats, but in a character matchup, regardless of what Gosain picks, I think, I think he does have a slight edge. Now, the only reason I, I can't necessarily give like a 65%er -er or a 60%er -er is I, I just don't know their head-to-head. -head. But my first inclination is like 60. Nino, uh, or sorry, uh, go saying favor over Nino. So let's go ahead, uh, go saying versus Nino. Okay, go saying versus speed kicks. This is going to be a good match. That's all I know. It's going to be a good match. I think, I think this one's going distance. Uh, I think this is going to be at least a four gamer, maybe a five gamer. Uh, I don't know if it's going to go f the, the final round, but I wouldn't doubt it if this is a game five and maybe like a 3-0 at the very end. It's probably going to be pretty close. Um, I, I think because Speed does also play Law, although I don't know if he's ever picked him in tournament, I, I think there is a slight edge. With that being said, kind of similar to you know fighting Countryman versus Countryman, Gosain versus Ao. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it if same thing Gosain has played against a, a player like Kwis quite often. Now, granted, Kwis and Speed uh, aren't really like the best like bleed over when it comes to play styles, but the idea behind like beating character like Harong is is there. It, it's the same same idea nonetheless. But, 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 I I think Speed I think Speed is gonna clear here. I I think. The, the trickiness, the the mental experience definitely favors a, a player like Speed in this head-to-head. -head. If Gosain plays Victor, I think Gosain probably have a better odd. Such it be like closer to like 45. But I, I think in like the standard like head-to-head -head matchup here, Harong versus, versus Law, I, I think Speed is going to have enough experience uh, to properly uh, pull that through. I think that's going to happen here. And whoops, did I go too far? Oh yeah, I went I went too far somewhere. It doesn't matter. We'll we'll give him the point and then go saying that would be on the second position. We'll give him zero here. Okay, uh go saying versus Ao Richie. I think in a head to head, and this one I'm a little bit more confident with, I, I think go saying does have pretty good odds against Air Richie. I think they do play against each other quite often, and I think in a head-to-head, -head, it is better odds. I might be completely off base, but I think Gosain has done historically very well against a player like Air Richie. With that being said, hometown hero in the sense of like kind of like previous defending champion. Uh, you know, you know, don't sleep on him. Also, uh, the one thing I really haven't mentioned either too much is. The possibility of getting perfects, right? Tekken 8 overall is such like a, a really heavy momentum game, and it, it isn't weird to like lose to someone first round or you know round two or something, get perfected, and then you just beat them clean three out. So those are different. So like in a game like T7, where it's very easy to get little chipping hits and whatnot, um, it's a little bit harder here. Uh, and actually, now that I come to think of it. Uh, because technically, a, a perfect only occurs when like your health is fully, you know, fully. I don't know what the word would be like realized when it's fully health and not like shipped out. If you just deal one point of chip damage and your opponent kills you, even though it's like a quote unquote like a ghetto perfect where it's chip, it doesn't count as a perfect in in the eyes of the game. 
So maybe maybe that will be the meta. Maybe the meta will be just to get the little chip hit or even little uh, power crush before you die <laughs> to make sure you don't die because then you do chip damage and it's not a perfect. But that might be something interesting. But yeah, I think I think overall, uh, I think same thing. I might be wrong. I think Gozain has the edge. It might be closer to like fifty five. So you know, closer to a, a proper coin flip. But I think Gozain probably pulls through here uh, over Richie. Okay, we have uh, JDCR uh, versus AO Richie. Uh, Dragonov versus Nina. Well, definitely a good matchup for Dragonov. Uh, he has the range and um, a lot of the uh, pressure ideas with Nina can be dealt with with Dragonov. No immediate major frame breakpoints in Dragonov's favor, so it's probably a little bit more even than I'm giving credit for. Yeah, actually, this probably might be a little bit better for uh, Leo. Now I come think about it loud. Leo has really good range, and Dragonov tends to have like more lingering hitboxes. But in, in a pure like damage output and all around overall character, Dragonov does have the favor. My first inclination was like 60-40, but now that I think about it a little bit more in like matchup experience wise, it's probably closer to like 55. Now then the question becomes, okay, does Richie have, or sorry, does JDCR have the Leo experience? Who would be playing Leo in South Korea? Ooh, man, I can't really. Damn, that's a hard one. Does anyone play Leo <laughs> down there? Uh, this is probably, if I was to, you know, just quickly jump through it. It's probably like 55, maybe 60 in slight edge. Uh, it's going to be close, though. I, I think whereas, you know, first of three would normally, you know, heavily benefit here. I, I, I do, do, do think that it, this is going to be closer than I give credit for. This, this is probably going to go five games, um, almost certainly. Might even come down to the very last hit. I would give a slight edge to JDCR just because, like, Dragonov is such an explosive character. And then, you know, furthermore, kind of similar to, like, T7, if Leo doesn't have a wall, she doesn't have that explosiveness that a character like Dragonov has. So it's possible in, in this head to head that Ao Richie just loses at the character select screen, at the stage select. If Ao Richie doesn't get a walled stage or an infinite, you know, like an infinite, quote unquote, yeah, I, I think I think it's going to be pull through, and then also furthermore, I don't believe Tekken Eight is a proper like. Well, it isn't like a T7 50-50. So like in T7, it felt like the stage selects were between walled or infinite, but it was like 50-50 despite the fact there's only three infinite stages. Yeah, I don't think that's the case here in in Tekken Eight. I definitely have had more wall stages, which leads me to believe that it is properly randomly distributed. You know, one of nineteen or how many stages there are. Uh, or is there is there 19? No, it's not that many. One of 12, one of 14, something like that. I, I think I think it I think it is a little bit more properly uh, random. And if that, like I said, if that happens, if Richie loses at the character select screen, unfortunately, that's kind of how it's going to go. Um, I can see that happening. Okay, we have. Uh, oh yeah, I, I screwed up here. Speed versus Nino. Actually, JDCR versus Nino first. So let's go ahead and do that first. Uh, this is a really good matchup for, for Dragonov. Like, completely non-bullshit. This is a great matchup for Dragonov. One of the few characters who can really not just punish him uh, tremendously, but really option select a lot of his things. Uh, it's going to be hard for Nino to establish an offense. With that being said, um, Bear uh, or Kuma, a tricky character. If Nino is able to get an early lead, it will be more difficult to come back. But in a head-to-head, -head, yeah, just uh, Dragonov just hard clears bear. Uh, it's a great matchup for Dragonov. Was better in previous games, but yeah, this game having access to I-14 back four uh, is a really big deal to have a really really low hitting mid. Um, it, it tremendously helps out Dragonov a lot. I also think that JDCR probably um, will have decent amount of experience against bear. If this was like Olson versus Nino, I would give this probably 80-20. But uh, JDSR versus Nino, it, it pr realistically, assuming JDSR has some knowledge against Bear, 70 30, uh, maybe, you know, 66%er. I think realistically, JDSR 
uh, we'll, we'll pull through here. Okay, now finally we have, uh, I believe, Speed versus Nino. So that'll be the last one here. Speed versus Nino. I don't know how much bear experience Speed has. The, so from a, uh, from a purely, like, you're playing, let's say you're playing a wrong matchup, like, having access to back three is so incredibly good where you don't have to know if bears ducking or on the ground stance, you know, having a steel pedal that's a launcher that also, keep in mind, is a, a, a instant spin if you're airborne. And a lot of these, like, micro states between stances on bear it can be effectively launch punish because of a back three. Of course, back three is launch punishable, uh, but same thing, I think, in a head-to-head -head matchup, the... Uh, it's really, really rough. If you if you kind of forget a few rules playing against Harong as Bear, you just get caught in these like no wins, and you just unfortunately kind of bleed out. Um, with that being said, Nino might have a, a good amount of experience a, against you know a, a Harong, probably even a, a, a Nina. Same thing, Nino probably also is really good against Bear. You know, I four or I twelve down four, Ivory Cutter being consistent against low options. Uh, I mean, you name it, Nina overall is such a really, really good character. Uh, I, I would give a, a slight favor here to Speed Kicks, uh, which is going to make things spicy. Oh, actually, no, JD Star would then pull through mathematically. Yeah, it's close, though. Uh, it, this is going to be close, though. I think, I think realistically, uh, this is like going to be 60 40. It's going to be close. It really depends on Nino's experience. It, but like I said, character wise, character matchup. The, it, this is really, really nasty. It can get really bad for Bear really fast. Um, yeah, maybe 55, like I said. I don't know Nino's experience against Harong. Or, or like, world-class Harong. But yeah, definitely don't sleep on speed here. Okay, so... Uh, half point, half point. So, it's gonna be, realistically... JDCR... Speed and then go sane. It looks like it's gonna be close though. Okay, never mind. I gave him half a point. I was thinking, oh wait, there's a one point here. No, this is a half point. You know, yeah. And of course, um, uh, for people who don't know, this ordering uh, isn't random. When um, you know, uh, the Red Bull people did this, this is not this is not random. So basically, the the top two are invite. The last two are a qualifier, or, or number three is a qualifier, and the last two, I don't remember, or no, no, no the last two are a qualifier, because Shonen was a qualifier. So I think the last two are qualifiers, number three, I don't know how number three got picked, but yeah, the first two were invite, the last two are qualifiers, and the third place was something, so th keep in mind, this is naturally seated. I'm not, hopefully, being too biased, uh, but yeah, this is this is naturally seated, so let's see here, I gave... JD Star 1, Speed 2, and then Go Sane 3. So, of course, uh, winner, and then loser side. Man, this is going to be. This is, uh, okay, I'll tell you this. At the bare minimum, this bracket's going to be fun to watch, that's for sure. Like, big, big time. <laughs> this is going to be one hell of a bracket, because. Okay. So, Olsan, I mean, no introduction needed. Uh, former Kasumi player, one of the best uh, fundamental players in the world. Now switched to Dragonov because all his characters are not in this game. No Bear, or sorry, no Bob, no Kasumi. Um, I think those are his two mains. There might be one more I'm, I'm kind of missing. So, yeah, it's like, okay, you know, if you're a really good fundamental player, uh, let's just pick a character like Dragonov who has really good movement, really good range, and does a shit ton of damage. Oh, hey, look at that. I'm, I'm suddenly, like, one of the best in the world. Right, it's like no, no surprise. Olson for a time there was the hyper dominant force. I mean, shit, he probably still is in Korea, in South Korea, where he's from, clearly. So, yeah, I mean, w no introduction needed. EWC winner won three hundred thousand. Joka um, is somewhat of a Mokujin player. Uh, he is very much well known from you know Great Britain uh, for his Fang play. Ninety five percent chance we're gonna see. Only Fang <laughs> from him, uh, although he has a Reyna uh, character. Um, that would probably be the only alt we would see. There's almost no chance he's going to bust out the old Devil Jin um, because of how mediocre Devil Jin is this game. But going to see, going to see the the the, the Fang. Jod, French player, 
uh, one of the people, one of the best uh, Nina players on the planet. Um, super, super good breakout in T7. Uh, still is very, very consistently strong in T8. Again, kind of similar to picking a top tier, uh, even though Jod is not a, a top tier horror corner kind of thing. Uh, yeah, he luckily lucked out with Nina, who is decently strong in 7, uh, but is ridiculous in, in T8. So we're still kind of waiting for the, the real big T8 breakout performance from him. Uh, and who knows, maybe, maybe that's this year. Maybe that's going to be uh, the golden letters. Uh, Anakin, uh, well-known uh, longtime Jack player from America. Um, not much to say about him. Uh, super consistent. Uh, been playing Jack for a while now. I, I don't think we're going to see a swap of uh, Anakin picking any other character other than Jack. But uh, yeah, same thing, kind of similar to Jod. Still waiting for the breakout performance from Anakin. Uh, one of the most like dominant American players in uh, T7. Uh, still sticking with Jack. Uh, some people put him higher tier, but I think most people tend to put him lower tier. So that kind of like character loyalty is probably hurting him. Uh, but with that being said, same thing. Maybe this will be his breakout uh, performance uh, for you know in the Red Bull. And in Shonen, I actually unfortunately I had to look him up. My apologies, Shonen. Uh, Japanese player. He plays June, and I can tell you, he's crazy. <laughs> He's gonna he's gonna play June. He's almost certainly gonna pick her through, and he's gonna hit you with a lot of things. And if you're not familiar with the June matchup, or you know you kind of let something slip here or there, uh, he's gonna pull through and, and overcome. The only issue I saw with his play style, and sorry for kind of singling him out here, but I, I had to single him out because I didn't wasn't immediately familiar with him, um, is yeah he, he there are a few traps that he is doing that are I wouldn't say super common. But they're common enough that at this tier level, realistically, I think people are going to be able to deal with it. With that being said, uh, the dude has really good instincts. Um, watching him play, uh, yeah, he, he he was confirming things and going for options. And they, they I don't think you can hit confirm. I think they're like situation confirm. And he was like doing really, 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 really well. I want to see him do well. June, a little bit weaker. Um, but at the same time, it's still in a T8 game, really, really a threat to be worried about. And like I said, if you forget the rules, kind of similar to Yoshimitsu, uh, you will die. Um, the only detriment, though, like I said, is the ideas, like tactical ideas, can use a little bit of work, but that's okay. He has time to still improve, too. Okay, Olsan versus Joka. Um, almost certainly going to be Dragunov versus Fang. Um, Olsan, super strong fundamental player. It, where it, that's where Fang tends to start to fall apart uh, with these like micro steps and whatnot. Uh, Joka, very well, um, you know, experienced player, is going to be able to bust through. It, it's not going to be a three zero. Um, Olson definitely has the favor here, but in a longer set, uh, Joka could bust some things out. And also, of the entire players here at the tournament. He's probably the person who's most likely going to same thing. He's going to switch characters. I don't think he's going to necessarily stick with Fang. So I wouldn't doubt it if maybe out the gate, Joka plays Reyna or maybe, uh, you know, switches midstream and goes back, you know, uh, Fang, Reyna, Fang. Again, 95% chance he's going to play uh, Fang, but in the first of three in a group match, I, I wouldn't doubt it if we see Reyna at least once, maybe twice, just to kind of stir the pot, see what your opponent knows and doesn't know, and, and apply pressure. Olsan, going to play Dragunov the whole way through, almost certainly. Uh, we're not going to see a deviation there. With that being said, first of three still, um, unless Joka, you know, heavy, heavy grinds and, you know, does the research or, like, you know, look at the EWC matches, look at everything for Olsan, it, it's going to be definitely in Olsan's favor. Uh, 60 40 just because I like I said I think Joka has time to adapt uh, maybe into the 66 realm it's gonna be different it's gonna be difficult but I, I think Olsan uh, will pull through okay Joka versus Jod um, I think this is like definitely a modern day kind of uh, classic uh, I think they play each other quite often and usually Joka I believe perseveres through uh, the odds there so I don't think it's going to be a blowout. Um, it's probably going to be like 55, 
45, but I think they have played quite often enough that they understand each other's play styles. And I think, I think for the most part, I, I think Fang is a decent pick against uh, a character like Nina. First thing that came to mind is like a Tiff versus Arslan, right? Came out the gate swinging when the, the Dragonaut pick wasn't working. So, yeah, switching to the Nina proved fruitful. Granted, they play each other all the time, so there's like a different metagame going on there. But I think for the most part, the retreating nature of Fang, uh, the evasiveness, uh, the certain breakpoints that it's harder for Nina to kind of properly hit there probably gives the favor to um, Fang. And then in a head-to-head, -head, I think Shoka does have a pretty good read on Jod. I would love to see Jod have a breakout, um, but it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a, a big hill to climb. Uh, Jod versus Anakin. This is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, man, did they have they played each other? For some reason, something's coming to mind. Maybe Jod versus a different... Oh, maybe I'm thinking of the the German uh, Jack player. Uh, this is going to be pretty close. I, I think from recent performance... I think J Jod has a slight edge, but I wouldn't doubt it if this this is a coin flip with a slight favor to Jod. Head to head matchup, I think Nina definitely clears Jack, but at the same time, uh, Jack can do a few things to kind of uh, keep her at bay. Um, I think it's going to be a battle of uh, stance usage. Is is Anakin going to properly be using flex stance or the? Uh, what the hell is the stance actually called? The Gamma Hal stance. Is he going to be using Gamma Hal like well enough to to lock out Jod to stop Jod pressure? Um, you know, in, in that case, it probably you know the little bit slight edge to Anakin. But I think from like just a pure tier and just character strand point, I, I think uh, Jod the the sorry Nina probably has a slight edge, but it, it is probably coin flip. I think realistically, like 0.5. 0.5.5, slight edge to Jod, so I'll give him the star just for a tiebreaker. Anakin versus Shonen. Um, I, 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 I hate to say it, but I, I think Anakin's gonna easily clear this. I, I, I think Anakin has the 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 technical prowess and like the the analytical side of the gameplay that he's not going to be fooled by these traps of June. Um, if if again the. The instincts on Shonen is easily the best part about him, and then the fact that you know he's able to what looks like magically confirm certain things is absolutely crazy. It might be ignorance on my part in just the June matchup overall, but I, I think overall his instincts are just really really good. The problem is this is more of a unstoppable force uh, meets an immovable object, but the immovable object also is like twice as stronger, so it's not like infinity versus infinity. It's like nine 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 versus infinity, and I think, like I said, analytical wise, I think Anakin's going to do the homework. He's going to know how to fight already, how to fight against June, and he'll watch the matchup and know how to, to annihilate uh, Shonen. So it might they might surprise me. Shonen might be able to bust, bust out there, but I, I think this is a one hell of a matchup. Uh, Shonen's going to have to do a lot of work, and it's going to be hard to overcome Anakin. Um, I, I think realistically. Yeah, it's going to be pretty one-sided uh, simply because it's, again, kind of weird character versus weird character. Characters tend not to tend to see it nowadays. But I, I think overall, um, yeah, I, I think Anakin will be able to persevere here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do uh, Shonen versus Jod. Let's see. D does June, June players in the upper EU. I mean, I'll immediately give a shout out to Blackheart. Blackheart comes to mind for like Southern EU, Northern EU. What Chun players exist? Damn, I'm drawing a I'm drawing a blank here. Maybe it's because June is so far out of a favor. But yeah, this is another another one of these. Like, you're, you're playing a weird character versus weird character, but unfortunately, uh, in this game. Jod's playing a weird character who's really fucking good. Uh, so this is probably closer than it was with the Anakin versus Shonen matchup. Uh, but Jod probably realistically clears. Probably 60-40. Maybe 66. I want Shonen to prove me wrong. But I, I don't know 
if he's going to have uh, the prowess or the uh, fortitude to beat a character like Nina uh, in Jod, who's so really heavy space control. And while Shonen has like really incredible instincts, it's going to be hard because Jod just has uh, immediate tactical uh, ideas and strategy on top of having a better character in general. Uh, it's going to be difficult for Shonen to pull through, although it is going to be closer. It's realistically going to be more like 60-40. I wouldn't doubt it if this goes like, you know, 3-2 to two in, in Jod's favor, I mean, like 5, you know, game 5. Uh, but I think I think ultimately Jod will persevere here. I think that's realistically what's going to happen. Okay, might as well keep going up the list. Um, Shonen versus Joka. Kind of similar to um, to Anakin, uh, Joka, analytical player, uh, heavily experienced player. If someone from this group knows how to actually beat June, it probably would be Joka. Um, I, I think uh, the matchup is nasty, super super in, in Fang's favor. Uh, I think Joka, like I said, has the matchup and just general knowledge to beat June. Um, it, it probably still, in the grand scheme of things, will probably be 60-40. But in this case, I wouldn't doubt it if it, it is closer to 66-33. I, I think I think Joka will realistically pull through. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, unfortunately, see it happening for Shonen. Shonen versus Olson. Man, I, I feel bad, dude. Um, okay, I, I'll say this: of the the character matchups on the screen, the the June versus Dragonov probably is the one that's close is close ish. Uh, but still, it, it, it Dragonov is going to be so good, big hitbox. Um, there might be some tricky like. Uh, what's it called? Is you two ideas or evasiveness where Dragonov really effectively can't hit a character like June, uh, but between Olsan's movement, which really annihilates a player like June or a character like June, and just his just same thing. He has insane instincts, insane fundamentals. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, same thing. It's realistically going to be 60-40. Going to be difficult for Shonen, unfortunately. Uh, I don't know if he has any other characters at play. But uh, for a, a player like or a character like June, this is probably the worst bracket that Shonen could have got. With the other brackets, you know, it probably would be closer. But it's like analytical player and then weird character simultaneously, uh, and they're all going to be doing their homework uh, to be able to trounce character like June. I, I want to see Shonen do well, but I, 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 I unfortunately I can't see it. I, I think Olson easy clear here. You know, same thing. 66 going through. Okay, uh, Olsan versus Jod. I want to say they pl have played each other. I want to say there's history, and Olsan has, has, has pulled through. Okay, Nina versus Dragonov. Yeah, nasty matchup. Uh, very momentum heavy. If Nina's able to get early dominance, it's harder to play from behind. Uh, fundamental wise though, I mean right, we gotta give the edge to Olson. 55, 45, probably closer to 60, 40. I think this is gonna be a close one. This is either gonna be like 3 1 uh, or 3 2. I, I think it's still gonna be close ish. Uh, but I, I think Olson will realistically pull through. Uh, there's a reason he's currently uh, regarded as probably like one of the best in the world. Um, because yeah, I mean, he, the fundamentals on on him are just absurdly, absurdly strong. Okay, Olson uh, versus Anakin. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult for Anakin. I think I think in same boat, it's gonna be fairly close. I, I think uh, now this is what I'll say. Whereas Olson versus Jod would have been like you know six one three or sorry three one three two. I I think this is gonna be a blow up. So I think whoever is going to take the first round is probably going to maintain momentum the whole way through. That has always kind of been Anakin's MO as is. Um, but same thing. Olsan, T8, very heavily momentum swingy. Whoever pulls out that early lead is probably going to get it. Olsan, same thing, probably 55-45. Uh, edge, if not 60-40. 
Um, same thing, matchup wise, this is rough. Olsan probably has the technical prowess to max punish a character like Anakin. So for that reason alone, it probably is closer to like uh, to 60 40. Uh, but yeah, it, what we'll see, are we going to see like the, the standard, like really simple 4 1 plus 8 punishes, or are we going to see those nasty back 4 1s or back 4 3s on 14, the max punishing character like, uh, like, like, um, like Jack? Also, the fact that uh, a lot of the low options for Anakin, or sorry, for Jack, can be wall stand 12. So, matchup wise, this is all, it's, you know, perfect for Dragonob. And in, then on top of that, you have a player like Olsan with the, the, the technical ability, the, the, the fundamentals to really, really uh, take it to Anakin too. It, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult for Anakin to pull through. But if he pulls through, it's going to be a 3-0. It's going to be very fast and furious. Uh, we'll see it. But um, realistically, yeah, um, it's going to be Olsan. And yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone would doubt Olsan would pretty pretty clear here. Okay, so that leaves us with the final one. Uh, Joka versus Anakin. So previously in T7, I think Anakin had a slight edge. Nowadays, Anakin's still playing the Fang, or sorry, still playing the, the, the Jack. Joka going to be playing the Fang. Uh, and then, yeah, since then, Joka has only gotten better. This is going to be really close. I, I, I think it's probably going to be Joka 55-45. Although, I... I can see this being, you know, 50-50. I, I could see this being 50-50. This could be a coin flip. I want to give a slight edge to Joka though. So what I'll do, I'll give him I'll I'll give him I'll give him 50-50 odds. I, I think Joka realistically will persevere here. This this honestly would be closer to three two. I don't think this is going to be fast and furious. I think this is going to be a grind fest. So who's going to have the mental fortitude to pull through? That's going to be the real question. Okay, so now we have a break in the previous uh, kind of pattern here. So now we have a, an interesting one. So let me go ahead and just remove Josh for clarity's sake. Okay, Olsan won. And I didn't pay attention. What do we, what do we have here? 0 0.5, 0 0.51, so a slight edge to Joka. So I'll put Joka in two. And then Anakin in three. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. So of course, W side and L side. Okay, pull four. I guess I could be giving you guys the information right now, can I? <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. Oops. Oh, well, that was weird. Like, forgot. Those were strange. Okay. Uh, CBM, a.k.a. Cherry Berry Mango, uh, South Korean Jin player. Super, super strong player. Uh, he has been having some ebbs and flows. Um, he did most recently uh, win a tournament that I still haven't covered, but unfortunately got spoiled for me, so I hate that I'm spoiling it for you guys. Uh, but yeah, he did, he did pull through and win that Challenger event. So he's playing Jin. Um, like I said, ebbs and flows, not super consistent recently, but for a time there towards the end of T7 and early T8, uh, Mr. Consistency wasn't getting, unfortunately, the dubs because, you know, you're going against me, you're going against Olsa and stuff like that. But yeah, he was always top top three easily every single time. Um, so yeah, this might be his year. Uh, don't sleep on him, especially playing character like Jin. Uh, speaking of people to not sleep on, uh, Australian Yagami. I mean, dude, like that EWC run was insane. Coming down, what was it? Coming back four, like zero four to win five four against Chanel was just beautiful. Playing that Reyna, gonna see Reyna almost certainly. There's almost no chance we're gonna see any other character. Um, yeah, don't sleep on Yagami. He's proven himself to be very, very strong. Now, Joey Fury, uh, killer in T7. I haven't really seen Joey Fury play much T8. I saw him play early T8. I, I don't know who he's going to play. Almost certainly it's going to be Jack, but I don't know for a fact. I wish I can give you more information about Joey, but like I said, I just haven't seen him play in a long time. Uh, I don't know if it's like real life sort of stuff or or, or what, or maybe he's waiting for Marduk. I, I, I don't know, but hopefully we see some uh, good Jack play. Sam Brother, um, I think the one that immediately comes to mind uh, from KSA, uh, breakout performance against Nii. 
uh, able to pull through. What I got to give the Sam brother watching him play, because I, I definitely had to review the matches with him, um, is just the dude has a lot of heart. Like, don't sleep on him. If if you think if you think you've already won, this guy will pull out the most. I don't know how he does it. He's a he's a freaking magician. He does a magic trick. Somehow you were winning, and now you've all of a sudden have lost. So the only way to actually beat this guy, the Sam brother, is essentially putting him into the ground. You have to put him down. You ha you can't let him go. If you go five games against this guy, you're gonna lose. So you have to beat this guy in three or four at the most. But yeah, don't go five against this guy. The dude has insane amount of heart. And speaking of which, uh, the German player Tetsu, same thing. I mean, super, super, uh, you know, uh, good cardio play, consistent, a lot of heart, um, able to pull through wins where he shouldn't get them. Uh, also, the fact that, you know, he plays kind of that, like, modern day heavy Claudio uh, YOLO play style, which is so good for Claudio in this game. Um, it's one of those, yeah, if you start to lose uh, your footing against him, he's like quicksand, uh, you're going to get overwhelmed. So we have heart, we, and we have quicksand, and then we have just like consistency. <laughs> so w what what is it going to be, right? Who Who is going to take it? CBM versus Yagami. Controversial? Yeah, Yagami, Claren. Yagami is so good, dude. I, I do want to say they did play each other recently. And I do want to say, this might have been Evo Japan. So I guess they're not that recent. Like three months ago. Or actually, shit. Four months ago. Five months ago now. I think Yagami did beat it. Unless I'm wrong. Maybe it was CPM who had beat Yagami. But man, that, that run EWC. It's probably going to be pretty close. But I, I, I want to give it to my boy. I'm giving it to Yagami. 55-45. Yagami playing that weird ass character. Jin is so strong in this game, but there's like a general like playstyle to approach him. Um, and then like Reyna, it's like, okay, well, we have a playstyle, you know, sidestep left and duck, flinch options, max punish on challenge. But then the problem is like Yagami is just so fucking hyper focused and insane tactical on the fly strategies. And man, don't sleep on him. It's probably going to be coin, coin flip-ish, but same thing. Uh, I'm going to give uh, Yagami the, the favor here. And let me go ahead and delete this a little bit. So I, I think, I think, ah, man, it's close. I, I would give him 0. 0.5. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and give him 0. 0.5. Let's, let's be a little bit more fair. 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5. But I think Yagami has the odds. So I'm going to give him uh, the tiebreaker right here. Yagami versus Joey. Man, I really wish I've seen Joey play recently because I can't, I can't think of how how he's played most recently. Damn. How, the, the okay first thing that comes to mind. Let's say let's just say let's what, what we'll do with Joey. We're gonna give him like a character matchup. We're gonna give him just who he's gonna play realistically. Going to be um, Jack. So we'll we'll give him heads up. So. Like against a, a character like Reyna, who's very hyper-aggressive, movement-heavy, it's going to be difficult for Jack to actually lock her down and, and, and apply effective pressure. Once you lock him, lock down Reyna, okay, well, now the fun begins. But it, it, she is so slippery, so evasive. Uh, uh, Sentai movement, Unsoku movement, uh, really good general movement, CD3 on approach, uh, electrics, perfect electrics. So Yagami even has an extra frame to launch a down for two on Jack. Yeah, it's it's going to be very, very nasty. The, and like I said, the only issue I have is I don't know if Joey has played against someone of Yagami's like, just general skill level. So that's, I mean, 60-40, let's more realistically, 66-33. I think I think Yagami is going to clear here. I really wish I, I watched Joey's most recent matches so I can give you a more accurate determination of what's going on here. Okay, Joey versus Sam brother. Um, I think. Okay, matchup wise, this is actually probably not that bad for Jack. Uh, first things that come to mind is what we had talked about earlier. You know, minus fourteen leaves him open to down the one punishment from Shaheen. Uh, back for two punishment. Four, one is okay, stuff like that. And the nice thing with Shaheen against Jack is you have these big boy combos. So there's a little bit of a natural favor to Shaheen. Uh, but 
you know, when it comes to approach, it's going to be more difficult for the approach uh, on a character like Shaheen. And then if Joey's doing the patented, you know, uh, good movement and good reads, it's going to be difficult. I wouldn't doubt it if this is going to go full distance five games. Um, I want to give, like, man, it's hard. Uh, damn, I wish I, I looked it up. My first inclination is probably like 55, 45. It is probably closer uh, to a coin flip, though. Uh, I'll do a coin flip, and I'm going to give Joey the slight edge here over uh, Sam. Slight edge. Sam brother versus Tetsu. I, I think I think this one is going to be more heavily into Tetsu's favor. Um, I, I think Tetsu does have a decent amount of Shaheen experience, especially in, in high-level tournament. Um, it's going to be harder because... Damn, I, I know a lot of people would probably put Shaheen as a higher tier, but I think for the most part, apart from the slide and of course guard crush, um, everything that Shaheen does is probably done better by a character like like Claudio. I know some people aren't going to agree with that, but uh, same thing. Check out my tier list, you know, top right for that. But um, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be closer to like 40, 60. Yeah, I think it's going to be roughly around that. Maybe plus or minus, kind of like five to either side, but it's going to be difficult. Uh, edge to Tetsu for sure. I think he's going to be able to pull through. Let's see, I'm just kind of theory crafting my head. Is there anything else kind of noteworthy that I would be missing? Slide pressure, sneak two, approach option, anti air. Yeah, we might see some weird anti air shenanigans. Up forward one approach, you know, sneak three sort of ideas. So Sam Brother tends to like running two a lot, but that's like typical Shaheen meta play. Anti approach keep out. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fairly close. This might, on on second thought, this might be closer. Uh, not sorry, not that. Uh, the 45, uh, 55. But same thing. I I, I do give odds to the, the Tetsu. I think Tetsu will uh, pull through. Okay, uh, Tetsu versus. Uh, Joseph Furious. Uh, heads up matchup. Like, you know, I don't know when the last time, I think that maybe the last time they played each other was in T7. Uh, I think Joey did pull through last time. Um, seeing as how I don't know much about Joey nowadays, uh, I do give odds to Tetsu. This is probably going to be pretty close. It's probably going to be like 45 55. Now, in the head to head matchup, um, slight edge to Claudio, but I think uh, a character like Jack, this is probably pretty close. It's probably 5.5, five, you know, 4.5, 5.5. Something very, very close. So I think realistically, that's probably what it's going to be. But yeah, it's going to be close. If I was to take a guess, kind of similar to the Anakin matchup we had talked about in the group uh, three, yeah, it's going to be a blow up. This is going to be uh, this is going to be a 3-0 or maybe a 3-1 at most. Who, whoever's taking the first game is realistically gonna gonna win the whole thing. Yeah, 3-0. So yeah, it's gonna be coin flip-ish. Tetsu's slight favor, just because of the head-to-head -head matchup as characters in general. But yeah, I, I think it's gonna be Fast and Furious, 3-0, but ultimately Tetsu probably has a slight edge. Okay. Uh, Tetsu versus Yagami. Ooh. I, I do feel like there was a, a matchup in the past. But yeah, y Yagami. Yagami's definitely going to pull through here. It's probably going to be like 65 35. The maybe 60 40. But I think ultimately it's probably going to be closer to 65. Same thing. This is going to be fast and furious. Uh, this is going to be a, a 3 0, 3 1. Um, if if Tetsu is able to pull through, it's going to be in a 3-0 situation where Yagami can't come back. I don't want to say, like, you know, curse of, like, 4-0. If this is the first of three, you know, Yagami would win sort of stuff. But I, I think, uh, if, you know, be guaranteed. But I think this is going to be the same thing. Fast and Furious. Maybe that's the whole issue with this whole bracket. This, is an, this whole bracket is just Fast and Furious. Maybe that's going to be, like, the ultimate detriment. Oh, you know what? Come to think of it. Same thing. This is a... Uh, Golden letters, right? Are we going to get like two golden letters wins in this bracket alone? 
you know, in the past we haven't had any, but is this going to be the first one where a single pool is going to have two wins on a golden letters? Who, who knows? Maybe, <laughs> right? Who knows? But yeah, I think I think Yagami is going to pull through there. Okay, uh, Cherry Berry uh, versus Tetsu. Um, I do believe they have history with one another, and I do believe CBM did persevere. Let's see. So CBM uh, would have natural uh, strength, you know, playing against uh, uh, not Malgu. God dang, what's his name? Uh, Molgold. So I think he's going to have the pedigree to fight against him. He'll have the tactical. Uh, it's going to be probably pretty close. I, I, I want to say, realistically though, 55, 45, maybe 60, but I would say closer to 55 uh, in Cherry Berry's favor. But yeah, look at this. This bracket's actually pretty close thus far. Okay, Cherry Berry versus Joey. Um, it, it's going to be difficult for Joey. CBM, you know, has been having a, a good time lately. And then same thing in this matchup. Uh, Jack versus Jin. I mean, that sounds like a fucking absolute nightmare. Yeah, it, it's probably going to be like... 60 40 realistically same thing this is going to be fast and furious this is going to be a 3-0 if joey pulls through it's because joey's going to win out very very fast but more realistically yeah it's probably gonna be a 66er in uh cherry's favor okay we have cbm versus sam brother we have Jin. man these are really long names oh we have Jin. <laughs> Uh, versus Shaheen. Have they played each other? I don't believe so. Jin versus Shaheen. Okay, Jin has the space control range, stronger options. If 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 Shaheen had a strong like wall stand fourteen, this would be a little bit better. Wall stand three three is okay for thirteen. The punish down two, and we have uh, down four counter tactical ideas. Wall stand 4 line, wall stand 4, mid reset 0.5, pressure follow up parry option. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving this the, the CBM. So they haven't played each other, but yeah, this matchup sounds like a fucking nightmare for Shaheen. Uh, probably 65, 35, I think maybe plus or minus 5. But um, this one will probably go 3-1. But um, I, I think ultimately uh, CBM will probably pull through realistically there. Okay, and we have uh, Sam Brother versus Yagami. I, I kind of similar to what we had said earlier. I don't know if Sam Brother's going to have the experience uh, against a, a player, a high, you know, the arguably best Reina player in the world, and uh, a Reina of, of tournament caliber, like super strong tournament. So, uh, heads up matchup. Let's see here. Yeah, it doesn't seem that bad. Uh, Shaheen naturally okay movement. Taller character is keep out approach. Back three plus four counter ideas. No, the command down for generic option counter poke reversal option two. It's gonna be yeah. I, I I mean I can't. I still can't see it though. Heads up like character versus character. It probably is pretty close. It's probably like fifty five favored uh, against Reina. But Yagami caliber, it, it's hard to really understate like how incredibly strong this guy is. Um, yeah, of, of this bracket, Yagami has the most to prove, but is also probably the odds-on favorite to take it. Although in, in this, again, head-to-head, -head, it's pretty close. But yeah, this is probably, at the bare minimum, 60-40. Uh, I'll give a slight you know, benefit to Sam, just because of the matchup, it probably can be pretty nasty for... Uh, Reina to try to apply effective pressure against the character like Shaheen. But I think uh, Yagami just has the the, the, the momentum, the pedigree, uh, to pull through. So it probably is closer to like a 66%er favored. Okay, whoa, look at that. So, okay, another, another kind of spicy one. I guess I don't have to technically do that. I can just delete it. Okay, so... Uh, so also keep in mind, 1 and 2 really doesn't matter because, again, 1 and 2 make it out on the winner's side. Okay, we have Yagami 
uh, Cherry, and then Tetsu, and then that's Winner Side and Loser Side. Okay, that does it for day one. Let's go ahead and move on to day two. Can I reverse that? No, I can't. Oh well. Okay, so um, I there there to the best of my knowledge, there is no information how day two pools are going to go. I don't know if it's a lottery system or if it's going to be. Um, like, you know, 1-3 A-B kind of system. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a 1-3 A-B. So let's go ahead and start breaking this up. So that would be... Uh, let me start Let me start deleting, deleting things because otherwise it's going to be a, a pain in the ass. Okay, so Joka versus Arslan. Okay, one versus two. Oh man, that's gonna be a nasty one. JDCR versus Cherry. Oh, also, yeah, I don't even, how does the loser side go too? That's also another kind of weird one there. Okay, Joka, you'll be playing against AK. Ooh, man, that's gonna be a nasty match too. Olsan versus AK. Man, that's going to be uh, another rematch that we've seen. And then Yagami will be playing... Again, uh, like I, I don't have any inside information. I'm, I'm doing a huge... A huge, like, you know, take it with a huge grain of salt here. Uh, please. Okay, and then we'll leave out loser side for now. Okay, Arslan versus Joka. Uh, going to be Nina versus uh, Fang. I think historically Arslan has done very, very well against Joka. No reason to believe it's going to change. Uh, the first of three format is definitely going to heavily favor uh, Arslan in this head-to-head -head matchup. Uh, so I'm going to give Arslan the favor. Um, probably it's at least 60-40. Um, if not 66-33 with the, the favor probably more realistically on this side. Got to be very difficult for uh, Joka to pull through, but Arslan uh, realistically will will make it through. And what we'll do is, let's go ahead and delete this, just for, and then I'll, I'll put them all together. So Arslan, Uh, let's do this. A little bit too large. Okay, Arslan win. CBM versus JDCR. Uh, unfortunately, this matchup uh, tends to heavily favor CBM, I think, in the head-to-head. -head. I believe, if I remember correctly, they played each other quite often. Uh, at least a few months ago. Like, recently, recently? I, I don't believe so. But ultimately, I think in the last couple of head-to-head -head matchups, CBM has pulled through. Uh, I, I think um, it, it's a mixture of just head-to-head uh, -head matchup knowledge and just kind of tendencies. It, it, I think CBM has pulled through effectively. Uh, I would have to look at the most recent results, but same thing. This is probably... It, it's probably 66-33. Uh, With that being said, this is probably going to be a 3-0. If same thing, if JDCR wins this... It's going to be him coming out of the gate, super hyper, hyper aggressive, pulling through, playing Tekken 8 to the maximum. Uh, but yeah, it, realistically, CBM 66 is probably closest odds there. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. Fast and Furious realistically, but CBM, I think, is going to be able to persevere. Olsan versus AK. Ooh, this is probably the closest one thus far. Olsan... Been proving himself to be the best, uh, one of the best in the world. AK is like right outside of that grasp. Uh, this is probably going to be pretty close, I think. This will probably be a 3 1. I'll give slight odds to Olsan 55 45. Uh, keep in mind, this will be day two, so there'll be plenty of time to, uh, you know, research your opponent. This isn't like you're thrown into the fray 
and do practice and experience and stuff like that, you know, proper research. Yeah, this is probably 55 plus minus 5, maybe uh, slight, slighter, you know, slight more close to 60, but I don't think it's going to be a blow up. 3-1, three, 3-2, three, three, I, think, I think we might go full distance uh, in this match. I think Olsan uh, will pull through simply because it's a first to three. But don't, yeah, same thing. Don't sleep on uh, AK. Ooh, Yagami versus Speed. That's a spicy one, too. God dang. Man, will Speed have the fortitude to hold out against Yagami is the really big question. If, if, if this goes 3-2... I, I can see speed taking it. The problem is I don't think this is going to go 3-2. I, I think this is going to be like 3-1, maybe 3-0. But yeah, do, will he have the, the fortitude to hold out here? Okay, I'm, I'm going to give a caveat. I'm going to give I'm gonna give Ed's, edge here to Yagami. I think maybe probably closer to 66 percenter. But... If if we go three two, if we go three two somehow, I think this is fifty five, forty five in speed favor. Yeah, if if we go distance, speed is taking this, but I don't think we're going distance. I I, I think Yagami's gonna come out fast and furious, and he's gonna be able to take that, realistically. So I think Yagami wins here. Okay, okay. Now we need to start uh, doing some uh, kind of movement here so let's go ahead just grab all the people uh actually you know what i'll do let me just delete them move them up and then i'll just grab this right makes more sense Eh, that's legible enough. Okay, so um, I'm going to do because they're on loser side. So right, we're going to do winner side before we do loser side. So how many how many losers do we have? This is probably head to head, right? So it's going to be one v one. But I don't think it's going to be this way. I think we're going to do same thing. This is going to be, you know, we're going to do split, split on the winners. So okay, so. Loser uh, of this would be Joka. So what we'll do we'll do one versus we'll we'll keep going down the pattern one versus three. Joka versus Anakin. Didn't we do that match already? Oh shit. Ooh, Joka versus Anakin. Yeah. So yeah, this is where things kind of get weird. Let's just say. Uh, Joka versus Anakin. Um, I gave odds to Joka last time. I'm not going to change horses midstream. Um, Joka will probably pull through over Anakin. Uh, same thing, day two. So there is plenty of time to do research after the fact. But yeah, still probably 55, if not at least 60. But uh, that extra day of practice, like, oh, okay, I know who I'm more likely to play would probably more favor Anakin, but I think Joka probably will pull through there. Okay, pull two, Tatsu. Sorry, yeah, obviously this is getting really dirty really fast, isn't it? Okay, JD Star versus Tatsu. They are for Tetsu. I think they have history. I think a K or J Star has pulled through. It's probably gonna be pretty close. I, I wouldn't doubt it. Let, let me let me make sure here. Fifty-five, maybe sixty. JD Star favor. Uh, I'm inclined to believe this is going to be fast and furious. This is going to be, this is going to be 3-0. Whoever wins this is going to win out very fucking fast. 
this is not going to be close. I, I think, like, same thing. Whoever's going to take it at first is going to take first game. Is going to take the whole set. But I'm, I'm going to give a uh, favor uh, to JD Star here. Okay, pull three would be loser of one. So, Kane and Trench. Kane and Trench versus AK. I think they played each other, right? And that was AK pull through. Or, no, was that, was that my EWC prediction? Man, I'm starting to kind of get lost in the sauce here. Okay, AK versus Kane and Trench. I, I think I gave it odds to Kane and Trench last time, but if I remember correctly, AK did persevere. Or maybe I'm completely wrong. Uh, but yeah, my first inclination is like 60, 40, maybe 66. Same thing, are, what, what Kane are we going to get on this day? Like, what would Kane and Trench, right? If we're going to get that massive killer Kane and Trench, could definitely be more like a proper coin flip. But I, I think AK will probably pull through uh, realistically. Okay, and then... Oh, did I fuck up? Oh, no, 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 I didn't. Wait, did I fuck up? Can entrenched. Oh, whoops. Did I, I, ah, man. Did I mess, where did I mess up? Did I copy and paste something too many times? Speed kicks you, got me. Yeah, I, I, I clearly messed up. Where did I mess up? Let's back up. Tattoo. Four would play against two. Two speed. Oh, what did I do? Speedy got me. So they played each other. He was on winner's side. Uh, go, okay. There, okay, that's the mistake. Go Sane. There we go. <sighs> okay. I was like, <laughs> it's one of those, like, you know, you do a Sudoku. And like everything's broken at the end, you're like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. Okay, go sane. That makes more sense. Okay, yeah, go sane uh, versus speed. Whew, man, this is like this is the whole like uh, Anakin versus Joker thing all over again. So yeah, don't don't take this with a grain of salt once again. <sighs> I'm I'm thinking. I, I think if we're going to a day two, I, I think I do like speed here. I, th I think if speed can pull it through, he's going to pull it through. He's going to go distance here. Um, it, it probably will be like 3-1 between, but I think speed, I'm going to give him odds. I'll give him 55, kind of similar to these ones, 55 to like 60. I, I think speed would uh, take it here. Over uh, Go Sane. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of the lower side. Kane and then Go Sane. So now we have, now we have to figure it out. So. Yeah, like I said, it would be easier if we had if we knew exactly how the tournament was going to be held. So, and like get rid of the Cerrone stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep going down the list. So once again, one, two, three, and then four. So that would be Arslan. And let me go ahead and just delete this one. Arslan versus Olson. That is the big question, right? <laughs> Who is going to take it? Last time, last time they played, Olson pulled through. Arslan is he going to be better prepared? Uh, well, is the, the big number one question, right? Just from a pure, the most recent, you know, match or sorry, uh, heads up play style or you know, last time they had fought each other, uh, Olson definitely has favor. It's going to be close. It's probably going to be 55-45, if not closer to coin flip. But I think at this point of the bracket, that's a cop-out to call it a coin flip. Uh, so I'm going to give a favor to Olson. I think Olson 
is the one more likely uh, to pull through. And actually, what we'll do... Get rid of that. Let's make it larger. Okay, uh, CPM. Versus four would be Yagami. Um, that it, it gonna be another Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious three o oh, three one maybe. Uh, assuming once again, I'm pretty sure uh, day two is also first to three. Double elimination, of course. Um, Yagami probably has slight edge, though, but Fast and Furious, same thing. Whoever's going to win is going to win fast. So I'll say 55 Yagami to 45. And yeah, I, I think that's about on target. I, I think um, I don't, you know, cl uh, yeah, I, I can't give him a 60 40 here. I think 55 is pretty much dead on. I think Yagami uh, will we'll pull that through. I think realistically, that's what we're going to see. Yami will make it through. Okay, and actually we can probably just start working on this one here. Okay, Olsan versus Yagami. Uh, it's it's hard. It's hard to root <laughs> against the GOAT, or the, the current uh, world champion, let's call him here. Um, yeah, Olsan is, is realistically going to pull through. Uh, same thing, I, I think Olsan's going to have the experience and the, the, the prowess and the fundamentals to effectively fight against a player like Yagami. Yagami, um, in this format, will have a little bit better of a, a natural advantage because no longer are we doing like the first to five of EWC. We're now doing a more for fast and furious, uh, you know, first to three. So for that reason alone, there's probably a, a, a more edge for Yagami. So like normally if this was like first to five, I would say like 66 to 33. But realistically, this is probably gonna be closer to 60-40. This first of three will definitely heavily favor uh, a player like Yagami, though. So, 60-40, I think, is more realistic. Okay. Uh, and now, now also things get weird too, right? So we have a we have a loser side here. So we have Joka. They'll be playing each other. Joker versus AK. Yeah, let's let's just go ahead and put them on here and let me delete this crap so it's a little bit more legible. And then that would be uh JDCR versus speed. Oh, that's gonna be a good match. That happens, holy shit. Okay, Joker versus AK. Um, I think in head-to-head -head matchup, I am pretty sure AK has always persevered here. Uh, it, it's still going to be pretty close. Same thing, first to three is a little bit more chaotic than the first to five situation. Uh, with that being said, um, yeah, AK realistically is going to pull through. Realistically, 60-40, I think, is probably on the table. Maybe a little closer to 45-55. Uh, but I, I think uh, the nature of it will still favor a player like AK. Uh, with that being said, um, yeah, Fast and Furious. This is going to be a 3-1, maybe a 3-0. But yeah, I think AK is going to persevere. I, I wouldn't doubt it if we get like Joka into AK like three in a row. I think could realistically happen. But I think that's I think that's on the table. Okay, so AK will make it forward into the bracket. JD Star versus Speed Kicks. This, like, like I said, if this happens... This is going to be a barn burner. I wouldn't doubt it if this does go distance. If, are we going to we're going to go full distance? Five games, maybe a couple, you know, final rounds. The best of all, too, is their play styles aren't really suited for golden letters. So we're not going to see a perfect uh, a perfect victory. Realistically, this is going to be two people, two heavyweights just boxing each other nonstop, and I can't wait to see it. 
Uh, JDCR probably does have the favorite, uh, but this is probably pretty close. This is probably going to be like a 55. Uh, sorry, that's an ugly ass five. 55, uh, 45. JDCR favored. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't doubt it if, if we're going distance. 3 2, final. Ah, oh, sorry, my mouse is on the end of the mouse pad. You know, fuck it. You understand what I'm saying? Heavyweights. Heavyweight fight for sure. Okay, let's go ahead and let me take a look just to make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, good, yeah. So then then this would be um, CBM versus AK, and then, uh, wait, 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 a second, one second, one second, one second. Arslan, where did Arslan go? Oh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, it would be Arslan, realistically, versus JDCR, and Cherry Berry versus AK, and I don't think this is a double jeopardy. Let me let me take a look. Once again, I'm flying blind here, guys. Bear with me, I'm trying not to... CBM versus AK. Yeah, we don't... There's no double jeopardy, right? Yeah, they haven't played each other. Okay, so yeah, this would probably be the bracket. Okay, Cherry Berry versus AK... Uh, this, to be honest, this is probably the most coin flip possible. Th this same thing. This is going to be two heavyweight boxers fighting each other. This is going to be a pure coin flip. So let's go ahead and, and get back to it. Arslan versus JDCR. Uh, unfortunately for JDCR, I mean, Arslan has shown himself to be very, very strong against um, Dragonon players. He, you know, had problems against Olsan, but uh, Olsan has also been playing absurdly very well for like a year now. So um jdcr is going to have some issues um it might be close ish but realistically i would say three one it's probably gonna be like arslan then j then arslan arslan but i think arslan is going to pull through here if i was to give odds it's probably going to be like 40 60 realistically closer to like 66 33 uh in arslan's favor Okay, Whew, coin flip. CBM versus AK. This is going to be close. Wh which AK are we going to get on that day? Are we going to get the super confident AK, in which case he's going to annihilate CBM? Or are we going to get the more consistent AK, in which case CBM would have a slight edge? It's close. It's a coin flip. It's a coin flip, but I, I think AK has a slight edge, the slightest of edges. But um, it's gonna be it's gonna be another heavyweight match. A three. This is gonna be a three two, maybe a three one. AK is probably gonna be able to pull it through in the in the long run. The benefit for CBM is he does have momentum on his side, so it's harder in that case. But still, I, I think I think AK is gonna persevere. AK versus Arslan. Yeah, I, it, I, I gotta give it to Arslan. Um, it, God, it's hard to say because, oh man, again, the, the, the three months ago, but I, I, I like I, I said what initially, like 55 Arslan favor. Same thing. I, I think it's about 55, 45. It can, it, whoever shows up that day will be the one to win. But I think Arslan does have the edge in this matchup. So I, I think that's realistically what we're going to see. We're going to see Arslan pull through. Arslan versus Yagami. Um, I think we talked about this already. Yeah, Arslan ha has the favorite. I, I think, like I said, f the Fast and Furious nature of Yagami is really strong, but Arslan it always somehow is able to keep us cool and doesn't freak out. Um, so, yeah, 40, 60, realistically. You know, maybe 45, 55, just given the nature uh, of the first to three. But yeah, Arslan, realistically, close to 60. Okay. And now, uh, Grand Finals, Olsan versus Arslan. I, I, I still got to give the, the favor to Olsan. Now, you know, normally we'll say, you know, like a slight edge 55-45 in, in Olsan's favor. But keep in mind, 
this isn't just the first of three now. This is a first of six for Arslan, first of three for Olsan. Um, now, granted, you know, bracket resets, you still need to get three. But it's going to be even more difficult for Arslan to pull back. So, whereas this might have been a 55-45, uh, this is now getting closer to, like, 60-40. Uh, but still, still, probably realistically, still in the ballpark of 45-55. But yeah, I think I think Olson's gonna pull through. Give him a little crown. Oh, well, not a wizard hat. Yeah, give him a weird crown. But yeah, I think I think Olson has has the momentum. He has the the, the you know the odds to pull through. Uh, I think Olson can do it. So, okay, um, that was it. This definitely went on way longer than I thought it was gonna be. But I think it's kind of because the second guessing myself for a few matchups and then. The fact that we have a little bit less information about this tournament than the, the previous one. But I believe this will be roughly the bracket. So, uh, yeah, if, it, if not Olsan, realistically Arslan, don't sleep on Yagami. Yagami can have the strength to pull through. And then, as usual, AK is always there um, lurking in the background. So, don't sleep on AK. Um, if I was to give, you know, uh, extra credit points, Olsan, number one. Close second, Arslan. I'll do Ash. Uh, don't sleep on AK. Don't sleep on Yagami. Those are my two next favorites to win. If they win, they're going to win through clean. And then let me give a, a random one here. Let's see. Let's let's give a, a shout out. Who can... Who can, Let's say who's going to be the big upset. You know what? Oh, fuck it, I'm giving it to Nino. Nino, I'm giving it to Nino. If someone's going to upset it, it's going to be fucking Nino. It, who knows? Maybe it's Bears Day. Okay, that, that's, that's a little hard to say. Okay, I don't think Bears is going to win it. But I think it, Nino has the best chance to upset the brackets by far. If Nino goes on a tear, which we have seen him do before, yeah, it, it could be his day. It's going to be difficult to win it, um, but he's going to be the, the, ba the bracket buster for sure. Okay, yeah, comments, questions, concerns, you should write Twitch, Twitter. Feel free to hit me up. Um, as stated, I wasn't originally going to do this, but I did get the request to do it, so here we are. So, uh, yeah, I hope you have a great day. Um, I still, I'm going to cover this tournament. I'm going to cover the ones coming up uh, that have happened. Um, but beyond that, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, guys.